Good morning. Good morning. Hi. <sighs> I go to my office really quick, actually. This is my office, I think. All right. Should be good. Oh yes, what a match! What a match indeed! Wow, lousy chairs. All right, up to the studio we go. Oh, again with this. Who, <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to top ten. Uh, so yeah, we went on like a. Must have been like a one or two week hiatus from doing these. Maybe maybe three or four months. But but point is, they're back, hopefully. So provided that we can make lists and you guys give us suggestions because we had a hard time coming up with a suggestion. So please note that when you're watching a top ten, if you've never watched it, a, a new top ten, um, that these things are open to very slight biases. We try to throw out biases, but if they're still there, then we apologize. We try our best. And of course, it's a very hard task trying to remember back to WrestleMania 1. With that being said, this week's top 10, I say weeks, even though the next one will probably be uploaded in about two months. But anyway, this week's, for the sake of optimism, top 10 is going to be top 10 main, I don't know, it's not really main events, but WrestleMania matches. So this is sort of like, we're going with only titles, because if there was a 1v1, then we likely don't remember it. So we're going with titles only, and we apologize if yours didn't get ranked high. So this is going to be with a mixture of sort of build-up, and a mixture of match quality with slight variables in between. So let's get to the top 10. Coming in at number 10 is Eddie and Rock versus Kids and Brooke, Team Brooke Kids, for the World Tag Team Championship. Now, the match itself's buildup was kind of iffy. It had some buildup with it, with Rock leaving the corporation, but that much of that had died out very quick going on because it wasn't a focus of the storyline however it did have a major uh impact to it so that was on there the match quality itself was relatively well i mean smart maneuvers made and whatnot and it would result in eddie and rock walking away with the world tag team championships together so that would be number 10 eddie and rock versus team Brook kids for the world tag team championship wrestlemania 2 Coming in at number 9 is K4L versus ZM Punk for the Raw WWE Championship. Now, this match itself has the automatic build-up ability to be really well. And there is some unfortunate bias when it comes to world title matches because those are typically just looked at as the main events of the biggest show. So it's really hard to get away from that. But this one didn't really uphold. And that is by no fault of ZM Punk or by K4L's that the match itself was bad. It was about 10 seconds of a match so the build-up was mediocre had some good qualities to it and then when it eventually came it really was 10 seconds and the match quality really didn't have anything beyond that but the build-up itself was really relying on zm punk uh trying to stay relevant up against k4l who had taken the championship from him and zm punk not only failed, but came short in just 10 seconds. So that is K4L versus ZM Punk for the Road WWE Championship, WrestleMania 2. Coming in at number 8 is Eddie and Wolf versus Kids and Brook Team Brook Kids. Once again, another tag team that uh, Brook Kids and Eddie are in. This time, instead of Rock, it's Wolf. So the reason that this one comes above the other one is not much because of match quality, because... It's really hard to exchange there in terms of match quality. So we're really going on build-up. With the whole DX storyline being completely reliant on this very match, should Eddie and Wolf have not won the Tag Team Championships, likely DX would not have been as successful as it was or as dominant as, as it was perceived at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view had they lost at WrestleMania. So a lot of this was reliant on them winning, which they did. It had good storyline building up. And it was a relatively good match, I would assume. I can't remember it too perfectly, and I'm not sure if anybody can, but... And a lot of people say they can remember it. Whether or not they can can only be told truthfully by them. So, just number eight is Eddie and Wolf, Team DX, taking on Brook Kids, Team uh, Kids and Brook for the Tag Team Championships at WrestleMania 1. Sorry, correction on the last one. It was for the World Tag Team Championships at... Uh, Brooke pointed that out, and I didn't want to have to re-record the whole thing just to say World Tag Team instead of Tag Team. So, correction, the last one was for World Tag Team. Anyway, coming in at number seven, 
we got Kendall 1056 taking on Agent Cool the Best. Now, the buildup itself was pretty good. Kendall had been a champion that had taken very controversial routes to being uh, to being Intercontinental Champion, not to say bad champion, but nevertheless controversial ways of holding the championship, and Agent was regarded as one of the best and one of the most undefeatable Intercontinental Champions. So really, it was one of the most undefeatable trying to go against the controversial ways of Kendall. Just if you look at it that way, it's a relatively good match. The match fighting itself wasn't all that bad, but the way it ended was truly what killed the whole fashion, was it ended in a three-tie draw, continuing on Kendall's streak of controversial retentions of his championships. So for that reason, Kendall 1056, or LL Blazy Ken, versus Agent Cool the Best for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania 2, comes in at number 7. Coming in at number 6 is Kurt Angle, Rabid Cool the... Rabid Cool Stuff, or Rabid Cool Tough Guy, would take on Glee Racks for the United States Championship. And the reason that this comes in at number six is because a lot of people thought that was, Rabid was going to be able to manage this match, but it came out as a shocker that Glee Racks would win the championship. A lot of people underestimating Glee Racks. The buildup itself was kind of overshadowed by the other main event, or other, sorry, the main event that Rabid would be in for his uh, Royal Rumble victory up against Ken's Rock 4 for the RCW Championship. So that one really kind of got overshadowed in terms of build-up, but the match quality itself wasn't something you can complain about. It was stalled, however, due to something that Glearax had to deal with, and then Glearax would walk away the winner for the United States Championship at WrestleMania 2. Glearax versus Rabbit for the United States Championship, number 6. Coming in at number 5 is Brook versus Sport for the Road WWE Championship. Now the match itself was a little... Uh, had a shock ending to it as Sport had just previously won for the Divas Championship literally the match before and this was the first main event uh, for the Road WWE Championship in this circumstance. It was one of three so it was a hard circumstance. It had a good rivalry between Sport and Brooke and it was a really big question as to would the Royal Rumble winner Sport take home the Road WWE Championship? Unfortunately she would not be able to do that and Brooke would be able to shut down the Royal Rumble winner in this case and um, just in general, it was a relatively good match, so, yeah, good match, relatively good build-up, a lot of questions going into it, and that is the reason Brooke versus Sport for the Road WWE title comes in at number five. Coming in at number four is Kids versus Viper versus Rock in a triple threat titled as Last of an Era, even though they weren't really, but still. Generally, the buildup was relatively good. It was one of the focal points of storylines, one of the focal points of storylines going into WrestleMania 1, and it just had a really more surprising factor to it because other matches that night were, yes, we want to know who wins, but it's not as much of a question because in a triple threat, two, you know, the two people, maybe not as good, can work together to take out the better person in whatever circumstance. I'm not saying this one, but that can happen in a triple threat. And so it really is a lot harder of a question to ask who's going to win it. So it's very unpredictable. The storyline was one of the key focal points going into WrestleMania 1. The match quality itself was a bit slow, which is why it comes down here uh, so much lower than other the next three matches. So that is Kids versus Viper versus Rock for the RCW Championship at WrestleMania 1. Coming in at number 3 is Ranger. Versus Kids versus Eddie for the Undisputed RCW World Heavy... Ch no, no. <laughs> yes, anyone that actually talks to Ranger, you'll get that joke. But uh, Ranger versus Mater for the United States Championship and the Intercontinental Championship. Ranger, the Intercontinental Champion, takes on the United States Champion Mater. And the reason that this one sort of had so much focus on it was, one, it was heavily announced that both championships would go home with one superstar, and it was really... You know, who's going to take both? And I think a lot of people had their money on Mater in this circumstance, if I'm not mistaken, but Mater came a bit short in that match. And Ranger would actually walk away with both the United States and the Intercontinental. The build-up before it was a lot of different title matches trying to flip-flop the title as many times as possible before the pay-per-view to find the two of the most suitable champions, so to speak. And Ranger and Mater, two best friends, would end up... Uh, with that duty, Mater the United States Champion and Ranger the Intercontinental Champion. And actually, it built two very good champions and two multi-time United States and Intercontinental Champions. So that's a benefit. So Ranger versus Mater for the U.S. and Intercontinental Championship at number three. 
Coming in at number two, we have the two uh, large, larger quality matches at WrestleMania 2. We have Kids versus Rabbit for the RCW Championship, and Y3 versus Eddie versus Brooke for the World Heavyweight Championship. Now, these two have one thing over each other, but at the same time, they have one thing under each other. Kids versus Rabbit had a decent amount of buildup because it had been building since Royal Rumble that Rabbit was going to challenge for the reign, and many people believe that Kids was going to be able to hold the, hold the title to WrestleMania 2, and that is what happened in that circumstance. So it was really the unstoppable challenger of Kurt Angle, who had won the Royal Rumble, the United States Championship, the Cruiserweight Championship, taking two-on-ones in multiple different circumstances all in one night, and, and just generally all of that, paired together with the fact that he was nearly unstoppable from Royal Rumble till WrestleMania, taking on kids' it was over 400, I think it was like close to 500 days if I'm not mistaken, close to 500 at WrestleMania, so it was a long reign, an unstoppable reign, taking on an unstoppable challenger, where kids was victorious and shutting down yet the second Royal Rumble winner, so that's one. The other one was Y3 versus Eddie versus Brooke. Now, the build-up in that was a bit on the iffy side. The build-up was mostly reliant on how good the match sounded. Y3 Reigns versus Eddie versus Brooke. That's a really good match, how you look at it. And But generally, the, the promo-wise build-up wasn't the best out there. But the match quality itself is not something that you can argue with. Uh, Y3 obviously picked off early by Eddie and Brooke in a two-on-one assault there. And Brooke being able to pr uh, pull off sort of the surprise victory over Eddie, one of the greatest World Heavyweight Champions to that time and still in general. And Brooke would walk away um, uh, the winner of that match. So we got Y3 and Eddie, Y3, Eddie, and Brooke for the World Heavyweight Championship and Kids and Rabbit for the RCW Championship, both at WrestleMania 2. Coming in at number one, I feel like this may have been just expected right from the get-go, is Eddie versus Ness for the World Heavyweight Championship. And this match, I'll, even though it was still one of the top, it still can be considered overrated. And it's not overrated, really, because it's probably one of the greater matches on one of the greater stages of them all. The match build-up had real personal hatred between the two, and it was almost perfect that they ended up fighting for the World Heavyweight Championship with a very hated, brash, arrogant heel for the World Heavyweight Championship up against the beloved and baby face and just really adored face here. And it was really Ken Ness pull off his big momentum at WrestleMania 1 up against the champion that everybody wanted to see lose who had defied all odds, no doubt. And these two forces would collide. They hated each other. It was a, it was a need to win for Ness. It was a need to lose for Eddie, for the fans. And generally, the match was very back and forth, with Eddie pulling off some early ones, Ness pulling off some early ones, mid-match, back and forth. A lot of it was in Ness's favor until the final shot, where Eddie was able to get around Ness in a very surprise shot, and was able to wipe out Ness, shutting down all that momentum, and cementing Eddie's legacy as one of the greatest World Heavyweight Champions. And that all happened at the very first WrestleMania, the closing match. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for checking out this episode of Top 10. We hope you would enjoyed uh, sort of a pop. <laughs> uh, I accidentally turned you. <laughs> Hi. Um, Fuck off. No, but thank you guys for uh, watching this Top 10. So, uh, apologies if it was somewhat biased. Of course, it's very hard to remember back to the WrestleMania 1. And, of course, you can go back and watch WrestleMania 2, the whole thing, the whole spectacular. And that... Is, uh, that's on the RCW network. Unfortunately, you got to pay yeah. nine ninety eight. What a bargain, right? That's better than Netflix or any other pay to pay. Uh... Actually, I think Netflix. No, Netflix might be more. Yes, but it's a better value. No, it's less, but still, it's a better value oh. than Netflix because why would you want to watch all the movies when you could watch the RCW network at really, really terrible four twenty p and terrible camera angles? Why wouldn't you want to watch that? Nine ninety eight. Send them in the check. Uh, send them behind this building. Actually, we have an alleyway and. Feel free to send the 10 if you like. Don't, and guys, don't worry. I'll try to convince kids to do some more top 10s. But, I mean, it took two days worth of begging him to do this one. So. It took, it took like a day help. and a half. Okay. Okay. Almost two days. But um, try She's to help. Racist. Try to, you know, beg him. You know. No, don't, don't beg say, me. Please, Just come up please with... do top 10s. Because that's come what up, I have to do. Come up with suggestions. Uh, don't necessarily make the list for us. If you'd like to, you can. And like always... Um, actually, I do have something. This isn't what you think it is. But like always, if you if you disagree with the list, 
please post your own list in the comment section below or above or to the left or the right. YouTube's really stupid with its YouTube uh, comment layout. So, yeah, you're probably going to have to open up another window by the time you see this video with the way YouTube changes its fucking layout. <laughs> anyway, this is Kids Rock 4. This is Brooke with a very long outro. And Yo. we approve this message. Not going to dance? I'm trying. Okay. Yay.